Well, hello, hello, everyone. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a couple of y'all are here. Um, taking username, Danny, a, a plus opinions. You better have a plus opinions. No bad opinion. This is the no bad opinion zone. Only a plus opinions. Well, I'm glad that you did make it, Danny, because now we get to spend Christmas Eve together. And by Christmas Eve, I mean afternoon here, but I, I assume by you saying tonight that it's evening where you are. Happy holidays right back at you, nerdy casual. I think that's Ty. Yeah, that's Ty's username. It, it gets so hard. Uh, like this is this is something I've been noticing the more that I, that I do t the Twitch thing is that like a lot of people, myself included, have different usernames on different platforms and, and like they'll ex some people expect me to recognize <laughs> them across platforms despite like different usernames or no uh, uh, profile picture attached or anything and so I, i'm just sitting there like huh who is this uh and then they'll they'll tag me on twitter later being like hey that thing you were saying i was like oh oh you're the one um that was something that like for sure happened last time i was streaming yeah it is ty okay sweet yeah I, there there are some people who like i'm able to pick up on from platform to platform uh, just, just out of how long y'all have been around and, you know, just the sense of familiarity. Um, Robert's a really easy one to get because he's Radical Robert all the way across. And Danny's an easy one to get because Danny is always Danny. <laughs> uh, and J Jake's an easy one to get too. Hello, Jake. How are you doing today on this blessed day? The, 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 the birth, the birth. Today is the birthday of our Lord and Savior, um Diedrich Zeta Bader um so you know that's a that's an exciting thing that we all need to celebrate my spreadsheet's taking a second to load in there it goes okay let me let me scroll down on that real quick uh that way we're at the place where we need to be uh for note taking I'm sure most of y'all that are here did we not have notes for chapter 18 chapter 18 was a really short one so that's probably correct um, but yeah, for those of you who aren't usually here, um, typically I'll run through a chapter. Uh, if there's like, uh, page breaks, um, then, then I'll switch over and do notes from there. Notes typically are stuff that we would use for timeline videos, will it canon videos, uh, and, you know, wiki kind of stuff that, 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 that we hope to have on the future Watchtower database website, right? Like appearances of characters and stuff like that. Um... But let me see. Let me scroll the PDF down to uh, to whatever chapter we got to get into, and then I'll uh, I'll catch back up with the chat, and then we'll hop into the chapter. Uh, I've been trying to do um, I've been trying to do uh, more interaction with the chat as I read, uh, and it extends the thing a little bit. But I don't care because I enjoy hanging out with you guys because I get no social interaction. Outside of this, I mean, unless you count sitting on the couch playing video games with uh, with my fiance, which I guess is technically a social interaction, but you know, that's a day in, day out kind of thing. Uh, so it's not as special. What I'm trying to say is I'm breaking off the engagement and I'm marrying all of you at once. Um, let's see, Conspiracy Buff is here. Hello, right back at you. And Andrew Cozzini, how's it going everyone? That's a good question to ask everybody heading into the holidays. Personally, here, uh, I'm doing all right. Uh, I think I might be starting to get a little cold um, just because the uh, sissy and I have a, a different uh, internal body temperature regulator, it seems. And whenever I think it's cold, she thinks it's hot. And I appease her by keeping the heater off. And now I'm kind of kind of been backed up today but other than that it's going decently i guess uh, <laughs> as good as it can be during the pandemic uh merry christmas eve marty i'm not marty <laughs> oh they they corrected it later on okay merry christmas eve maddie this has been a fun ride it's funny how one stream uh, of this was on my birthday back in october 15th and now christmas eve can't get enough DC and Harley Love. Yeah, this has been uh, this has been a pretty long book, and if I were doing, 
uh, more than one book club stream a week, we'd probably get through it faster. Uh, I did start taking up a second stream on Saturdays um, that, in my opinion, is a lot more fun. If you guys are able to come through this Saturday, uh, it'll be at, at 6 p.m. my time, so six hours from now. Uh, so Danny should be asleep, but he showed up last time. Um, and, and we're doing just general general hangout stuff, right? Last time, um, we we started working on a, like a, a visual timeline based off of our uh, our DCAU research, and we started off with our Batman Beyond video. Uh, it took us four hours <laughs> to get through the 11 minute thing because of all the fun conversation that was popping off. Uh, it's going to be, you know, a lot less rigid than these where we have to get through two chapters uh, within an hour or so. Um, those are going to be more loosey goosey, like whatever, whatever I feel like's going on then. And, you know, much more conversation driven. So if you're able to be there uh, on Saturday, um, that's going to be at 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, uh, which is six hours from now. See, except for Discord, where I am Donye's now and forever. Dude, Donye's in Paris, you know? Um, I thought it was tomorrow. You thought what was tomorrow? I, I don't... Um, the Saturday stream? No, because this came in before I was talking about the Saturday stream. I'm not sure. Hey, Ted is here. Happy holidays. Hope this stream goes better than mine did yesterday. You know, it, it's... It's a shame that, like... We can't all have comparable hardware uh, to, to run everything, especially, uh, you know, whenever we're not necessarily at our house with our good internets and everything. Uh, but I'm at my house, so my internet is as good as it can be right now. Uh, Jake is tired. Go take a nap, buddy. Go get yourself a little, a little shut-eye. Uh, Twitch needs an edit button for comments to prevent autocorrect. You know, everything needs an edit button. Uh, perfect way to spend my birthday Saturday. Hey, well, it's almost your birthday. Happy early birthday. Uh, I was up late last night watching The Lord of the Rings. The live action or the animated? They're both fantastic in their own rights, but I, uh, I, I have more of a connection to the animated ones. Uh, Danny's going to power through the exhaustion. Eh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right, well... Let's uh, let's go ahead. Let's hop into um, into chapter nineteen. Uh, we'll take notes as we're going. I've got uh, I've got the chat open here on my phone, so I will try to be um, you know active with you all while I'm reading. Uh, if you guys do anything, catch my eye. Andrew says uh, for Maddie and or the chat, what other DCAU episode do you think would translate to a novel well? Oh geez, um, Starcrossed, one hundred percent. Starcrossed would be uh, a good one. Um, you would probably have to do it kind of like how they do this uh, this novel and like start it off with some backstory that's not necessarily part of Starcrossed, um, the the episode. But I think more or less that it would uh, it would end up making a really good novel. Uh, the live action my friend is letting me borrow his HBO Max. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, those are those those are definitely fun movies. Um, I don't think I've sat down to watch the third one in full. When I was younger, they just felt long and boring. Uh, but I, I watched I rewatched the first two um, a couple years back, and they were a lot more fun than I remembered. Uh. Okay, so let's hop into uh, let's hop into chapter nineteen. Um, for those of you who weren't around last time, uh, we are Harley. The the past decent amount of chapters we've been spending in Arkham. Uh, Harley is you know working there. She had a um, an all female villain support group that she was leading up. That didn't work out well, but now she is. Solo giving um, giving uh, sessions to the Joker, um, and last chapter was when uh, when they did the whole uh, Joker's father beat him uh, situation, um, and Harley hasn't seen anything about that in the uh, in the doctor's notes that uh, that she's been you know studying to to give him his therapy sessions. 
Uh, but she came across a doctor last time who admitted to taking stuff out of uh, Arkham's notes uh, and, and and destroying them because he came to realize that they were all lies. But she is now suspicious uh, on whether they were lies or not. And if that dude was uh, was trying to cover something up. Um, I don't remember what that guy's name was. Was that the Dr. Patel that this chapter is starting out with? Uh... It was Dr. Davis. Okay. So Dr. Davis is the one who uh, who was destroying things. Uh, well, lots of people with their suggestions on, uh, on novels. We got the uh, Last Son of Krypton, Over the Edge, uh, I Am the Knight. Uh, those would all be good ones. I think Rebirth would be an interesting one to see play out as well. Maybe Return of the Joker. Uh, I've got... I've actually got the novelization for that right here, which is a uh, much, much smaller uh, in comparison to to the Mad Love novelization. <laughs> um, I have all my Batman Beyond books pulled out uh, for the timelining streams and stuff, but uh, but yeah, let's go ahead. Let's uh, let's hop into this. Um, when Doctor uh, when Doctor Patel applied for permission to take three of his patients swimming at the county pool. All of Joan Leland's alarm bells went off. Dr. Patel proposed to hire an unmarked prisoner transport van so no one would know these were Arkham inmates. The pool would be reserved for a private swim so they wouldn't have to worry about members of the general public. The van would have two expert drivers and Dr. Patel had lined up staff members willing to volunteer for extra duty. Should any problems occur, the patients could be quickly subdued and returned to Arkham. The safety and security arrangements weren't that weren't what Dr. Leland was worried about. What had set off her alarm bells was the fact that the proposal was completely unlike Shatan Patel. He was a man of cool reserve who normally believed in keeping psychotic patients calm and avoiding excessive stimulation. In Dr. Patel's view, their minds were already prone to chaos. Many of them had visual and auditory hallucinations, even when they weren't agitated. Keeping them peaceful prevented undesirable behavior, which, in many cases, was the best anyone could hope for. Dr. Leland thought swimming sounded like the antithesis of what Dr. Patel was trying to accomplish. On the contrary, Dr. Patel told her when they met in her office to discuss it, I'm not talking about a free swim situation where they all splash around and jump off the diving board. I'm talking about attaching water wings or belts to my three most well-behaved patients so they can float quietly, perhaps with soft new age music in the background. Uh, uh, let me scroll that a bit. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. There'd be enough room in an Olympic-sized pool for them to drift about calmly, each with a nurse to look after them so they wouldn't bump into each other. Buoyed up, or relieved of even the minimal struggle against gravity, they might even achieve a meditative state. I'm not so sure about the New Age music, Dr. Leland said. The joke went past Dr. Patel unnoticed. Then we'll play recordings of whale songs, he said. I hear that's even more calming, very spiritual. These people are in dire need of something to feed their spirits, but without any dogma, of course. Jesus, that book is tiny. Yeah, it's uh, the, 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 the children's novels are usually a bit smaller. Uh, anyone have a dream DCAU project they'd like to see? I'd love a Flash or Green Arrow movie. Both of those would be pretty cool. Um... Personally, my uh, my go-to is I want a Warhawk Cairo buddy cop movie about Cairo's early days in the Justice League. Uh, um, Bruce Wayne shows up and is very upset about uh, you know a kid being there. Warhawk is really upset that uh, that this child got his uh, his father's um, lantern ring uh, and not him. Just all kinds of fun drama uh, to be had now that we know you know what happened in Return of the Joker and all of that and have all of the backstory of JLU uh, with, you know, Warhawk's dad and everything. I think uh, it'd be be a fun little, little area to explore. Heart of Ice is another obvious choice for novelization. I'd love to see what they add to Freeze and Nora's history together before uh, she fell ill and got frozen. Oh, come on, Danny. You, you know they'll never do it. 
you know they'll never do it. They'll, uh, the, the, if it's if it's Paul Dini, uh, Nora will be in the fridge the entire time. <laughs> uh, D Dream DCAU Project, a Nightwing spinoff series. That would be cool as well. Have Nightwing and, Blood, and Bloodhaven. I'd be down for it. Uh, let's see. I don't know about the patience, but I'd like to try that myself, Dr. Leland said. So would I, said Dr. Patel with a chuckle. I've been familiarizing myself with various forms of hydrotherapy. There are flotation tanks where you float in very salty water with no sensory input. Forget it, Dr. Leland told him firmly. I know, said Dr. Patel. That kind of therapy might be appropriate for only a very few patients. It occurred to me while I was researching that we have to avoid becoming too set in our ways. There's a fine line between calm and monotony. In our, de uh, in our desire to avoid trouble, that line can become blurred to the detriment of patient care. Good point, Dr. Leland said, meaning it even as... Uh, meaning it even as she wondered about him. Uh, Patel was conscientious and kept current, but he wasn't an innovator. I'd like to read this research of yours before I make a decision. I knew you would, so I've prepared a folder. I can email you as soon as I get back to my office. Dr. Patel's smile was actually eager, like he hadn't spent a dozen years trying to erase the line between calm and monotony. There are also a few videos, but they aren't too long, 45 minutes at most. When would you like to meet again to discuss it? I'll let you know, she said. Dr. Patel's smile faded. Well, we're all busy, he said with a disappointed sigh. But I wanted to move on this as soon as possible. I'm sorry, I can't tell you we'll get together at the end of the week or first thing Monday, Dr. Leland replied, irritated. I've been subpoenaed to testify before the grand jury in the corruption case, and I have to prepare. There may be a preliminary hearing. Oh yeah, uh, apparently there's some money laundering going on through Arkham. Uh, that was a thing that was established last time. Now Dr. Patel looked utterly baffled. What for? Dr. Leland wondered if he was kidding now. There have been financial irregularities connected to some Arkham board members. It's been all over the news. The man shook his head. I never watched the news. Too agitating. He started to get up. One question before you go, she said suddenly. This swimming idea of yours, did you get it from Dr. Quinzel? Dr. Patel's dark brown eyes were astonished. Good heavens, no. She's the last person I'd get an idea from. Oh? Dr. Leland's eyebrows strained toward her hairline. Do you have a problem with her, or do you feel that I'm wrong to let her concentrate on one patient? Dr. Patel hesitated, then sat down again, moved his chair a little closer to her desk, and lowered his voice. That was your decision to make, he said, and I know you've taken more of her patients, so the rest of us wouldn't be too overburdened. It's not how I would have done things, but I'm not in charge. Dr. Leland nodded. And your feelings about Dr. Quinzel? She's young, Dr. Patel said. If it had been up to me, I don't think I would have hired someone so inexperienced and, for lack of a better word, eager. She's quite brilliant, I don't dispute that, but she's, well, young and brilliant. Compared to everyone else here, she's practically an innocent. I don't mean to disrespect her. I can see she's intelligent, and personally, I like her. But I wouldn't ask her to consult on one of my cases. Uh, either that or JLU anthology series focusing on background heroes. That could be cool. B-Tech really did burn you, didn't it? But yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, it's just that one issue of uh, Adventures Continued just is a huge bummer to me, right? And the way, uh, the way Dini was talking about, uh, how it was going to be an exciting moment that he was so ready for fans to see because it made so much sense with the, the characters in the world of Batman the Animated Series. And I got to it and it's just like, oh, you are just undoing things and it seemed spiteful. Uh, and even if it wasn't spiteful, just not very good, uh. I've had that same thought about Cairo getting John Stewart's ring. I've been writing a fanfic around that concept. I'm guessing, uh, I'm guessing they sign off on that pool thing, considering Killer Croc has his own tank in TNBA. Um, yeah, Harley's been really pushing, uh, pushing to to get a pull at Arkham, uh, and we have seen Killer Croc earlier in this book, so maybe. 
Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Let's see, where are we? You might feel differently uh, if you'd seen her handle a fire extinguisher, Dr. Leland said more to herself. Never mind. I'd just like to know where you got the idea. Dr. Patel shrugged. I read some articles and they stuck with me. It seems to be very current in the field right now. I'm not one for being trendy, but I won't dismiss a good idea just because it's the topic du jour. Oops, excuse me. The hell he wouldn't, Dr. Leland thought, hiding her amusement. So nobody mentioned putting us in a swimming pool here. At Arkham? Dr. Patel looked appalled. That's a horrible idea. The first day it'd be full of bodies floating face down by lunchtime. So uh, I think we got a couple very small notes to, to cover here. Um, one is we got Dr. Patel's full name. I feel like we had him earlier in the book somewhere. Though, uh, maybe not, because it's not control effing to find him. So, we will, uh, we'll put him in as a character that appears in this chapter. What was, uh, Shatan Patel? Dr. Shatan Patel. Oh, hey, what was, uh, what was that? Did someone just join us? Limes has followed. Welcome to the the uh, the 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 thing the the what we're doing here the book club. Welcome to the Twitch channel. Welcome to what was a God? I was about to make a switch foot joke, but I feel like that's probably probably pretty dated. That was like what two thousand four and like Christian emo. So I don't feel like it would have landed. Were they even emo? Like, they kind of came up around that emo and pop punk uh, uh, circle, but I always felt they were more just like regular alt rock, like Lifehouse or whatever. Uh, and we had a mention about he had been working here for a dozen years. Yes. Uh, Dr. Patel uh, spent a dozen years trying to erase the line between calm and monotony. Uh, it suggested. Dr. Patel has been at Arkham for a dozen years. And that's page 158 in mine, so I'll just put that there. Uh, let's see. I also kind of want to see what the wider world of DC looks like in the Beyond Era, not just the other cities, but other planets too. Yeah, that would be, that would be a lot of fun. Um, I imagine that if you're doing other planets, you could probably bring back a lot of um, a lot of you know alien DC cast members uh, just based off of the the like oh you know they all age differently. So it'd be interesting to see um, you know a Green Lantern Corps that like still has Kilowog or or, or Tamar Ray, but uh, has all new um, Earth Lanterns or something like that. Um, and you know, of course, other parts of the, the, the galaxy as well, or universe, I should say. I'd like to see more of Superman's everyday life in the beyond time, as well as adult static. Yes. I've always been very curious about adult static, uh, switch foot as in dare you to move. Yes. Yes. What is Christian emo? Oh, come on. Don't, do you, do you not there? There's, there's like. There was a whole, like, when emo was at its height between, like, 2004 to 2006, there was, like, a, a whole slate of, of, of Christian bands uh, that were, like, emo and metalcore and all that kind of stuff. Most of them were on uh, Tooth & Nail Records, which I think is actually based here in Seattle. Um, I know, I'm trying to think. There's like Under Oath, there's uh, Amberlin, Emery, uh, um, Showbread was one of them. Like there's, it, it's a whole thing. I'm, 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 I'm trailing into a different, uh, into a different thing. Lifehouse and the Fray. I mean, Lifehouse and the Fray, I, I, I wouldn't classify as emo. They, like they're more alt rock. I feel like Switchfoot just kind of got bundled into the emo scene somehow uh and I, i've never understood how that happened because they are much closer in sound to the lifehouse and the fray and stuff like that 
Um, let's see where ba, 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 where was I? We we just got to a page break. Right there. There we go. A few days later, a nurse named Jack Abraham sought her out as she was on her way back to her office after a session with Phil the Fish Frobisher, uh, who earlier we found out is just uh, an, an arson for hire. Uh, Harleen Quinzel had not used the term boring in Frobisher's file, but Dr. Leland wouldn't have blamed her. He seemed determined to follow the path of least resistance to entropy. Dr. Quinzel's concentrated full immersion therapy would roll off him with no effect. Dr. Patel, on the other hand, would have regarded his treatment as successful in that he didn't engage in any undesirable behavior. Frobisher definitely deserved to be confined for life, but in Dr. Leland's opinion, in prison, not Arkham Asylum. Unfortunately, his lawyer had made an ironclad deal. When she had uh, curied it, the board sent her a terse note excuse me, saying they were sure the head of Arkham Asylum had more important things to think about, like possible budget cuts. Whoever was looking out for Frobisher had probably been well insured, especially against fire, Dr. Leland thought, and turned her attention to next year's budget. You got a minute, Dr. L? Jack Abraham asked, falling into step beside her. He... He was an ex-Marine with combat experience, husky, though not linebacker size like most of the orderlies. Give or take ten seconds, she said cheerfully. Jack Abraham seldom asked for anything or made complaints. What's on your mind? I was wondering what your thoughts are on Dr. Patel's proposal for swimming therapy, the nurse said chattily. I told him I'd volunteer as support. I see, Dr. Leland said, slightly unsettled. Ugh. Let's discuss this in my office, but I really don't have more than a minute. She unlocked the door, gesturing for him to take the chair in front of her desk. Why the sudden interest in swimming? She asked as she sat down, opening one of the file folders she'd been carrying to remind him uh, she was busy. It's not really sudden, Jack said, looking ever so slightly defensive. I've always believed exercise is great therapy. Been a gym rat all my life, even before I joined the Corps. I still hit the Gotham Health Center three or four times a week. Arkham doesn't have a gym, and considering who our patients are, it's just as well. But they all need exercise, and swimming is good for all ages and every level of fitness. Lifehouse did make it on a few episodes of Small. God, I bet, I bet the, I bet the soundtrack to that show is a like a time capsule going back to. Uh, Jars of Clay and Skillet are Christian rock, right? They are the only two Christian bands I ever really listened to. Yeah, yeah, they're they're both Christian. Jars of Clay, um, Jars of Clay had like a mainstream breakthrough uh, back in like the late '90s, but it didn't it didn't really hold over. Uh, I feel like Skillet had a little bit of that. I think I think they did like a like some WWE music or whatever. So that makes sense that uh, that they would be ones uh, that would hit your radar. Uh, Jars of Clay for sure is a uh, is a it, in my opinion, Jars of Clay is probably the best of like just the the the, the Christian like uh, adult contemporary rock uh, bands because so they've uh, they've always kind of kind of gone and, and and broke the mold of whatever that genre is doing. Um, and like, sure, like a lot of it is, uh, religious lyrics and stuff, but the music is, uh, I definitely enjoy, uh, from time to time. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. where was I? Arkham doesn't have a gem. Ah, there we are. Dr. Leland nodded, glancing down at the contents of the folder without really seeing them. So I've been told by Dr. Patel at length and in detail. She paused, frowning thoughtfully. He didn't put you up to this, did he? Oh, no, not at all, Jack said, looking worried now. He doesn't even know I'm talking to you, I swear. Your support and willingness to volunteer is noted, and I'll take it into consideration, Dr. Leland told him, but now I really can't give you any more time. No problem, Jack said, getting to his feet. I appreciate your letting me give you my input on it. I promise I'll think it over carefully, she said, pretending to be absorbed in the file. Anything else? No, 
Just thanks again for listening. He was cheerful, but there was a hint of disappointment in his voice. Okay, so really quick, we got a uh, we got the new character of Jack, Jack Abraham. Oh, let me uh, let me get that out of here. And let me see. And he's he mentioned um, Gotham Health Center. And then, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I think the pool was, like, given a, a specific name. County Pool. It's, uh, it's capitalized, so I'm including it. While we're on the, uh, the topic of Christian emo bands, uh, since Danny's in here, and I kind of have a sense of his, uh, his, his, uh, the music you like. Uh, I would suggest uh, checking Copeland out at some point. Um, they're not quite as heavily uh, in the Christian uh, category in that, like, they're 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 a Christian band, but it's just like we're religious people, but we're not making religious music kind of situation. Uh, very, very, for the most part, just very chill, uh, relaxing, uh, alt rock kind of music, and it is great. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let me find my spot in the book. There we are. So, have you joined the swimming campaign? Dr. Leland asked the Joker. It was just the two of them in his cell, while Dr. Quinzel waited in the hall. Dr. Leland swore she could feel the woman's apprehension coming through the wall like heat. The Joker blinked at her in what seemed to be a genuine bewilderment. What swimming campaign? Don't you want to go to the county pool, she asked. Enjoy the numerous benefits of hydrotherapy and no-impact aerobic exercise? Is this some nefarious plot hatched by the loony lady? Oh, excuse me, by the female patients to get me into a speedo? Don't answer. That's a joke. I hope. So you don't want to try out for the Arkham Asylum swim team, Dr. Leland said, amused. Not to be flippant or disrespectful, doctor, the Joker said slowly, but do I look like a man who wants to be seen in swimming trunks? He studied her for a moment. Does Dr. Quinzel know we're having this conversation? Of course, said Dr. Leland. She agreed to let me interview you at any time on a moment's notice, if need be, without her being present. With all due respect, this feels more like an interrogation than an interview. The Joker said, and I have enough experience with each to know the difference. Dr. Leland was sure he did. Has Dr. Quinzel said anything to you about swimming therapy or exercise? She's mentioned maybe getting me a stationary bike or a treadmill, he said, but walking or riding a bike to nowhere seems more like an exercise in food uh, uh, futility. In futility. He sighed. No, Dr. Leland, we've never discussed swimming, although a jacuzzi would be nice. We never really like uh, hear much about the founders of Arkham in the DCAU, like a Jeremiah or Am Amadeus. I feel like they've come up um, once or twice in, uh, in um, tie-in material, I think. I feel like we kind of got into that history in the uh, the Rise of Sinzu novelization, uh, but yeah, we don't really hear much about them in, um, at the very least, in the on-screen canon material. Uh, also, Reliant K is good sometimes, explicitly Christian slash sometimes not banned. Yeah, Reliant K is fantastic. Um, they're uh, they're they're a bit more pop punk. Some of their their more recent stuff is a bit more mellowed out. Um, I, you know, I, uh, I, I do enjoy them for sure. I saw them, um, God, what, in like 2013 with Motion City Soundtrack? And it was so weird. They, uh, I guess they were switching headliners every date of the tour. And the date that I was at, uh, 
Motion City soundtrack was the headliner. But the problem was we were in um, we were in Florida, the Panhandle of Florida. So we were in the Bible Belt. And the majority of people who were there were there for Reliant K and had no clue who Motion City Soundtrack was. And uh, after Reliant K finished, uh, over half of the audience left. So it was a it was a bit more intimate experience with one of my favorite bands, um, which was really cool. But it was kind of upsetting to see so many people just dip out and uh and not realize that you know another really good artist was going on afterwards Ugh, i'm sorry i'm so uh uh congested and everything today like i was saying uh, i think i'm coming down with a little bit of a cold hopefully hopefully it's not uh uh covid like uh like you know because we can't do two i got the covid videos uh, <laughs> But I don't think it is um, because we haven't been leaving the house at all except for groceries and picking up cat medication. Uh, so our human um, interaction is very, very limited. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's just a cold. Uh, and hopefully I'll be over it in a couple days. Uh, but yeah, where were we? Uh, but, but, but. Harleen didn't pace on or hop from one foot to the other. Nathan, the orderly sitting outside the Joker's cell, would have reported that to Dr. Leland, and there was no telling what she'd make of it. At the moment, Dr. Leland was very much in favor of her therapy program for its salutary effect on the Joker. Even some of the orderlies were saying he'd changed for the better, but Harleen wasn't taking any chances, especially now. After the women's group fiasco, her current success made her want to do cartwheels through the halls for joy. And yet, she had to be more guarded than ever, because professional achievement wasn't the only reason she'd loved coming to work every day. It wasn't even the biggest. At first, she would tried to deny her feelings, telling herself it was only counter-transference. Very intense and powerful, but nothing more. It was perfectly normal. People became psychiatrists in the first place because they wanted to help people, and doing that stirred up a lot of emotions. But the therapist couldn't let them interfere with the treatment. The patient's best interests were the most important consideration. The doctor had to put the patient first. Yes, but suppose acting in the patient's best interest stirs up even more um, positive feelings for them. Harleen had asked one of the instructors during her psychiatric rotation. You do what's best for your patient because it's the right thing to do, the woman had replied, not because it makes you feel all warm and fuzzy. Those things might overlap, but your feelings can't be your motive. Let me scroll a bit. The instructor's words had helped Harleen clarify her thoughts and feelings, especially during her first clinic experiences. For a while, she had seriously considered writing a book to explore the contradictory dynamic between therapist and patient, an inmate personal relationship that could not be in, oh, an intimate personal relationship that could not be intimate or personal. It was a fascinating topic in its own way, but she hadn't become a psychiatrist to study other psychiatrists. Arkham Asylum was her dream job, sometimes nightmarish, but that came with the territory. Her patients were many things besides psychotic, passive aggressive, obsessive compulsive, depressed, borderline narcissistic, psychopathic, self-destructive, and most of all, exhausting. Next to these things, countertransference was a non-issue. I always found it really weird that they actively chose to switch out Jeremiah when adapting the guy's introductory storyline for BTAP. When adapting the guy's introduction. Which guy? Which guy are you talking about? <laughs> In 
In the back of her mind, however, she had wondered if, in some instances, it wasn't that simple. Could it be that in certain circumstances, two people who had initially come together as doctor and patient had actually been meant to find their way to each other? Wouldn't they then realize their lives had been incomplete, lacking something to make them work right? For example, one of them might have turned to crime, even gone crazy, or maybe just seemed crazy to everyone around him. Wasn't it possible that fate could bring that person's soulmate to him in the form of a doctor? In which case, would the doctor have the wisdom and courage to accept the truth, that they were meant to be together? Or would she knuckle under uh, to convention, hiding behind jargon like countertransference, because the prospect of professional censure and disapproval made it too hard to do the right thing? If she chose the latter, she wouldn't just be giving up her chance at happiness. She'd be one of the more sor sorry excuses for a human being following that ever popular path of least resistance to mediocrity. God, the world was so irrational. Things were perfectly natural. Love, for example, were fraught with complications and obstacles. If you didn't get arrested for being a victim, some so-called authority was telling you what emotions you weren't allowed to have or even that your feelings weren't real. As crazy as the patients in Arkham Asylum were, they had nothing on the outside world where the golden rule was love thy neighbor and you'd be punished if you did. Okay, so we're starting to get into the, the, the Harley wants to fuck the Joker territory. Um, let me see. We got a guy named Nathan the Orderly. Um, give me a second real quick. I'm going to go uh, try to blow my nose. Uh, it, it's, it's bugging me. I'm sure that y'all can tell. Uh, I will be right back. Hold on. I'm not going anywhere, but I'm just going to put it on standby for a second. There we go. There we go. That was the right button. Uh, Jeremiah Arkham's. I probably could have phrased that better. Uh, actively chose to switch out Jeremiah when adapting. I'm still. I'm still kind of confused on what you're. Uh, what you're talking about there. When. Did, when did they adapt his storyline for B test? Wait. Was that? Are you talking about? Uh, um, in the Senzu novel? Because other than that, I don't remember anyone being mentioned uh, in BTAS. Uh, fun fact, if you Google Florence Nightingale Syndrome, the first image is Harley and Joker. Uh, I've, I've heard that term before. Is that like a, a doctor-patient relationship? His comic introduction, it was loosely adapted for BTS and he was switched out in it for some random doctor. Oh, huh. A term of questionable usefulness defined as either a situation in which a romantic attraction or bond develops between patient and caregiver and is the direct result of the caregiving experience or a person's self-image in that of 
a healer or other thing. Are you talking about um God, what's his name? Dr. Bartholomew in uh in BTAS? Let's see. We got the we got the notes for that chapter. Oh no, did uh Oh there it is. The music stopped for a second. Uh, let's see. Chapter 20. This is, uh, this is gonna be a relatively short one. Let's power on through! Despite her insight, Harleen struggled with her feelings. For the couple of weeks, she tried to deny them. She had been extra careful to do everything by the book, to cross no lines, break no rules in the time she had been at Arkham. She hadn't put a foot wrong. She never even took more office supplies than she needed. Unlike Dr. Davis, what was he doing with all those paper clips? Eating them? She felt she had to, to, uh, to hold herself to a higher standard just because of how her co-workers saw her. Except for Dr. Leland. The other doctors often treated her like a little girl. Clever, but still wet behind the ears. It wasn't really that anyone disrespected her. The progress she'd made with the Joker impressed them and the nursing staff as well, although a lot of the orderlies were sure she was being played. But there were always cynics everywhere. People who had been eroded by life rather than enriched, who, like the old adage said, knew, uh, knew the price of everything and the value of nothing. Harleen was so lost in her thoughts that she, the sound of the Joker's door opening made her jump. Nathan jumped too, probably because he'd been dozing. Not that she faulted him for that. Guard duty was pretty boring. Besides, she liked Nathan. He was one of the orderlies who had gathered up Killer Croc. Later, she'd overheard him telling some of his co-workers not to sell the new shrink short just because she was a pretty blonde. She, she watched Dr. Leland typing everything, uh, typing with one hand on her tablet. When she finally looked up, Harleen said, Everything okay? Dr. Leland's smile was perfunctory. Seems to be. She headed down the hall toward the elevator, beckoning for Harleen to follow. Tell me the truth, she said, pre pressing the call button. Are you behind the swimming trend? Swimming trend? Harleen did her best to look innocent. Not too long ago, you asked about the possibility of putting in a swimming pool here. The next thing I know, even Dr. Patel is extolling the benefits of swimming. He wants to take some of his patients to the county pool. She paused, looking intently into Harleen's face. I'm not accusing you of anything. I'd just like to know if you gave him the idea. Dr. Patel wouldn't take my word for, uh, for it if I told him the sun rose in the east, Harleen said, laughing a little. I don't mean anything bad. I like Dr. Patel. He's really smart, and he works hard to stay current. But he sees me as his junior. He'd give me suggestions, not vice versa. Did you talk to anyone else about swimming? Maybe the nurses or your patient? Is that what my patient said? Harleen asked, ho hoping she didn't look as apprehensive as she felt. No, Dr. Leland laughed a little. When I mentioned it to him, he thought it was a female conspiracy to get his clothes off. She laughed some more and Harleen laughed too, despite a sudden flash of irrational jealousy. Was it? Harleen asked after a bit, a conspiracy? Dr. Leland laughed harder, putting a hand over her mouth to stifle it. Oh my goodness, she said finally. I really don't think he's Pamela Eiley's type. And he's definitely not Harriet's. He's not shiny enough for Magpie. And he's too tall for Mary Louise. It certainly wasn't me, Harleen said, forcing herself to grin hugely so her boss would know th what a joke that was. I didn't think so, Dr. Leland said, still laughing a little. More like wishful thinking on the Joker's part. He is an exhibitionist, after all. He claims he doesn't want to be seen in swimming trunks, but methinks he doth protest too much. Okay, tight. We we did we narrowed it down. It was Dr. Bartholomew. Now we know. Um let's see, where was it? Meath do doth think he protests too much. 
Uh, there we go. Scroll that on up. There we are. I don't, Harling said. Not after what happened to him with all those chemicals. Dr. Leland was still laughing when the elevator doors opened. Normally, I don't make pronouncements about someone else's patient, but I've known that man longer than you have, she said, stepping into the elevator. He's an in, uh, inveterate, inveterate show-off. Crime gets him a lot of attention, but he'd take off his clothes in a pinch. Dr. Leland's phone rang just as the elevator door slid shut. Harleen hurried back to the Joker's cell. Nathan let her in and locked the door behind her without budging from his chair. The Joker was stretched out on his side of the bed, his head propped up on one hand. She wanted to know if you talked about swimming with me, he said. I posited a female conspiracy to put me in a speedo. Harleen didn't say anything. They just stared at each other in silence for a few seconds before they both bust out laughing. Oh, that was a little too far. She thinks I've instigated a campaign for swimming therapy, Harleen said, when she could speak. As if. Where do people get such silly ideas? The Joker said, laughing. You would never do anything like that. You're too professional. Too much of a straight arrow. He paused and sat up. But with hidden depths that only someone who knows you well enough can see. Harleen sat down in her chair, opened her notebook, and jotted the date and time at the top of a blank page. Are you saying you know me that well? I'd say I'm the only one who does, my dear doctor, he said, because hidden in those depths are things that only I would think of. Is that so? Harleen's laughter died away as she felt her heart go thump. Her heart was doing that a lot lately. She pushed her glasses up on her nose. Can you give me an example? Well, there's the secret of your name, the Joker said, leaning forward and lowering his voice a bit. Camouflaged with Dr. Harleen Quinzel is Harley Quinn. Harlequin, the classic clown character who originated in a form of Italian theater called Commedia dell'arte. Harlequin is the spirit of fun and frivolity. When I heard your name, I felt drawn to you immediately. What's in a name, Harleen thought. So it was only my name that made you want me for your therapist? She asked uncertainly. Like everyone else, I heard about your heroic takedown of Killer Croc. I wanted to meet this beauty who could repurpose a fire extinguisher at a moment's notice. And your name only made you that much more intriguing. The Joker looked into her face openly earnest. Then you showed me you didn't need a fire extinguisher to put an unruly patient in his place. He gave her a brief, apologetic smile. I knew when then I wanted you. Needed you. Harleen's heart went thump again. So hard, she thought he must have heard it. Uh... Okay, so in Dreams of Darkness, the Arkham Administrator is Dr. Bartholomew, not really anything DCAU on Jeremiah Arkham. Uh, he's well-versed in history, but, like, why, though? Because cause I'm the Joker, baby! What, 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 what need... What, what, why does he need to, to have a reason to be well-versed in history? Some people are just into the things they're into. Besides, what we are getting is the history of comedy. So it's not so much that he's well-versed in history, but he's well-versed in comedy. He studies his art. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I knew you were the only one for me, that I could put myself completely in your hands, because even as you slapped me down, I saw a twinkle in your eye. Not because you didn't mean what you said. I know you did, he added quickly. But as a sign there was a fire inside you, I was afraid it was just a trick of the lousy fluorescent lighting. Then you laid out your plan for this concentrated full immersion therapy program, and I saw it was no trick. 
You're the one I've been waiting for! The only person I can ever open up to! The one person in the world who can understand me! And the Harlequin who would get all my jokes. His successful therapy was all down to her name? Harleen felt uncertain, as if someone had yanked the ground out from under her, and she was a cartoon character standing in mid-air, about to fall a long way into a ravine. No, I'm not, Harleen told herself firmly. The injured child in him had responded to the twinkle in her eye. It had reassured him that she would accept him, not hurt him and never hit him so hard he woke up three days later. An injured and neglected child had a profound understanding of validation, inclusion, and kindred spirit as things they yearned for, even if they didn't know the words. Besides, deep, life-changing relationships of all kinds had to start somewhere, usually with things like a smile, a word of greeting, small talk. Harleen's gaze fell on what she'd been writing. My one true love in all the world, one soul in two people, Harley Quinn and Joker equals heart with arrow through it. Uh, like, okay, so we knew this part was coming, right? We knew that, like, because it is a Harley Quinn story and not a Harleen Quinzel story, that eventually... Okay, we have Dr. Davis already. That was the one note that I wanted to take. But we knew that eventually uh, this this would be coming, right? Because it's an adaptation of, of a specific story that goes a specific way. And, and despite how much they put in here to, to build up Harley being smart, to, to build up Harley's, uh, um, you know, her agency and her, her, her like... You know, she's she's book smart. She's street smart. She's she's independent. She's all of these things up to this point. And now Joker's here, and they're just they're just pulling it all back and being like, no, we have the story has to go the way that it has to go. And it's kind of a bummer that we're at this point because it feels inconsistent with how they've been building Harley, right in the in the first. Uh, um, 18 or so chapters like obviously once she started uh doing the 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 joker therapy stuff like they started trying to inch us into that but like that's near the halfway point of this book where we've already gotten uh, a, a pretty badass version of, of of harley uh you know coming through and all of her street smarts all of her book smarts all of that's just all of a sudden out of the window because this dude's a smooth talker and she doesn't trust the system because of a childhood experience right like it's kind of it's kind of weird that that's where we're going with this right she doesn't trust uh, uh um the way that criminals are treated because of the way her father was treated back in the day and so she's uh despite everything else pointing to her having the tools needed to see through joker's bullshit she's falling back into the my dad was treated wrong as, as a a as a criminal and so now now all criminals aren't actually as bad as anyone says they are and it, that's not the lesson you're supposed to be taking from that and it's kind of, it's just, it's kind of frustrating. Um, let's see. Oh, we got a couple of, let's see, Rockman, thank you for the bits. Uh, hey, Maddie, it's Raul again. I hope you are having a good day, my man. Do take care and do keep up the great work with what you and the boys do. Well, thanks, Raul. You're, you've always been, uh, been a very kind person whenever you come through. And I appreciate the bits and the kind words. Um, I am uh, I, I am having a good day for the most part. I you know ha have a little bit of a a, 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 a nose stoppage. Uh, I think I'm getting a cold. It might be allergies just because my my nose is itching. But otherwise, uh, the day's been been pretty good. 
Uh, all right, so this is ordered differently from the comic in episode wherein he points out the Harley Quinn thing in their first conversation and promises to share his secrets. He's also just really proficient in chemistry for no apparent reason. Yeah, it's a uh, th this whole thing has been ordered uh, a little bit differently than the uh, than the episode or the comic, right? Because we're doing all of the flashback stuff before getting to the the present day. Um, and I don't even know if we'll get to the present day, like, TNBA era of things. Uh, they, they might take it somewhere else after this. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not too sure where we're going uh, as an ending point. I just know that, like, since we're in Arkham, like, we had to hit those flashback beats. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I feel like it should be more of a default in her rather than just his charisma. I'm not entirely sure uh, what you mean by that. Uh, and before I forget, Merry Christmas, Maddie. Well, thank you, Earl. Merry Christmas back to you. I'm uh, I'm very excited for tomorrow. We're gonna be uh, we're gonna be making a pretty big uh, pretty big meal, um, getting drunk and watching uh, watching Dragon Ball Evolution uh, for the first time. The the really crappy live action uh, Dragon Ball movie that has. Uh, what the fuck is his name? The Tom Cruise's son from War of the Worlds playing Goku. I've always been interested in it, just never got around to it. And uh, since we just finished the entirety of Dragon Ball recently, um, with the exception, oh no, I just uh, I just scrolled to I don't know where I scrolled to, but with the exception uh, of uh, a couple movies, we have finished the Dragon Ball canon. Uh, and we felt like this would be a fun thing to do since we can't uh, really get together with family this year due to, you know, COVID and all of that. Uh, like, she should have some of her own mental instability that Joker takes advantage of, not just Joker seducing her. Right, well, I mean, that kind of that kind of goes back to uh, um, the stuff I was talking about with her childhood, right? Like, there's, there's a, a set of trauma there that's, I guess... Um, making her not see things too clearly um so if you want to mark that up as mental instability i guess you could um but it, it's definitely it's definitely like the way that they're going about it just feels weird to me right because like in the mad love comic like her reason for wanting to like she wasn't as smart right in the comic she slept with her her professors to get through college um and then she went to work at arkham specifically because she wanted to exploit uh the villains and and write a tell-all book um and i think that part was brought through to the episode whereas here um you know pat cadigan uh, it, it, it's Pat Cadigan and Paul Dini. I assume Paul Dini's only credited in the fact that he came up with the original story and that Pat Cadigan is probably the one who actually uh, wrote the book. Um, and here, Pat has uh, has really been, you know, cognizant of the fact that uh, it was 2018. We were, you know, like 20, maybe 30, yeah, 20 years after the after you know the fact and society had progressed a little bit and the you know the the whole sleeping with your professors to to get your grades thing is a you know it kind of kind of a, a sexist uh storytelling trope and so she's been really good on on making it to where harley is uh you know smart uh to make making it where she she's uh you know i keep using the word agency um, you know, making it to where she's she's a well-rounded uh, uh, character that's not uh, written, you know, from a man's perspective, <laughs> and yet, with all the tools available to see through this, it just it just doesn't happen. Uh, in all fairness, I think the problem is that they wrote Harley to be smarter than the Dini and Tim character was originally envisioned, who was a bit more out of her depth dealing with manipulative. Yeah, I, that's basically what I'm getting at. Um, but let's keep uh, let's keep on rolling. In general, Doctor Leland was good about not micromanaging the staff, and she didn't intrude on their lives outside Arkham. But one thing she did insist on was that all the staff psychiatrists saw a psychiatrist on a regular basis. 
Harleen had no problem with that. Like anything else, crazy could rub off on other people and not always in a way or not always in ways that were as easily recognizable as mass hysteria or folia do uh one of my favorite albums uh by fallout boy uh the problem for harleen was finding a shrink she felt comfortable with in gotham city aka batmanville Speaking of crazy being contagious, most of the psychiatrists she tried refrained from the open displays of hero worship endemic to the locale, but none of them found Batman as questionable as she did. When she expressed her feelings about the so-called Cape Crusader, they all immediately chalked it up to the fact that she wasn't from the Gotham City area. A couple were willing to admit that under federal, state, and local laws, Batman was problematic, but they added there had always been something odd about the area even before Batman. Something in the soil, the water, the air, or all three affected people in a way that caused the sleep of reason to produce monsters of a kind that persisted even after reason was awake. In Harleen's view, this was rationalization with a side of self-aggrandizing. We're not like the rest of the world. We're different. We're special which they used to justify violations of the social uh, compact and normalize Batman's aberrant, uh, aberrant behavior. Eventually, she found Dr. Faye Silver, an older woman who sometimes consulted for Dr. Leland. Harleen chose her simply because she displayed a sense of humor about most things, even Batman. Harleen dutifully checked in with her once a month and never told her anything important. Dr. Silver probably knew as much, but so what? The rule said she had to see a therapist if it didn't say anything about actually having therapy. Harleen could just imagine the look on Dr. Silver's face if, during one of their monthly appointments, she suddenly said, Oh, by the way, my father spent most of my childhood and all my adolescence in the Coxsackie Correctional Facility. That's a maximum security prison in New York. He got out just in time to see me graduate from high school. The good doctor would probably look at her the same way her first college roommate had when Harleen had foolishly been honest with uh, when Olivia had asked what her father did for a living. I, uh, oh, I hit the wrong button. Uh, where's, uh, where are we on the PDF? I tried to, I tried to scroll down and instead didn't scroll down. Uh, but there we go let's see uh harleen had finally moved to a dorm across campus just to get away from the stairs nice people's parents didn't go to prison well not unless it was club fed where all the inmates had been framed for banking irregularities and taken a plea to spare their families the expense of a trial they'd probably have lost white collar crime wasn't like real crime uh harleen had known better than to tell anyone about the scariest night of her life and she certainly wasn't going to tell dr silver about it either if anyone found out she had seen two murderous psychos die violently in the same night when she was seven years old, she wouldn't be working at Arkham Asylum. She'd be locked up in it. Just on the general principle. Then they'd go after her mother for saving her life. The police beat up victims of crimes. Harleen didn't want to know what they would do to someone who dared to fight back. Especially here in Batmanville. Yeah, see, so I called it. They're they're doing the whole like the childhood trauma is the reason why, uh, is the reason why she's falling for Joker. <sighs> Only one person in the whole world knew how much it, it pained her that on a planet full of adventure, so many people were just sleepwalking through their lives. Only one person in the whole world could see how natural it was for her to uh for her to be drawn to someone larger than life wide awake fearless and energetic with the power to make her laugh and cry within seconds there was only one person in the whole world she could bear her soul to 
who would listen to her admit that, despite her best efforts to conform to the standards and expectations of her profession, she had fallen in love with her patient. Only one person in the whole world would not immediately condemn her. And the only person in the whole world who really understood her didn't let her down. You're a you're a true rarity of a woman. Uh, you're a true rarity. A woman of daring. Uh, I'm, I'm keep losing my, my place. A woman of daring who welcomes the challenges of a world full of bold, bright colors and is brave enough to enjoy it rather than hiding from it by running on a human-sized hamster wheel and calling that life. Somehow you know exactly what's in my heart, Harleen sighed. You get me like no one else ever has. Of course I do, my dear Dr. Harley Quinn, said the Joker. It was like the sun was shining inside her. Harleen thought with another happy sigh. She'd never known how good it could be to have someone who knew exactly who she was, who she really was, and who she really was, was Harley Quinn. There's a uh, there's a couple of small uh, notes. We got Doctor Fay Silver. Um, we got mention of uh, Coxa Co Coxsackie Correctional Facility. Uh, we got Club Fed. And uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. we got mentioned that uh, that Harley had been trying to deny her feelings for weeks. Uh, wasn't there a mention of months somewhere? I know she was supposed to see Doctor Silver once a month. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know. I don't see it. Uh, so while this novel is debatably not canon, are we acknowledging that DCAU Harley has a father who led a life of crime? Uh, I mean, I feel like it, it, it checks out to me. Um, but um, I think typically uh, speaking with the way that our, our, um, our timeline rules work and all that, uh, there's a tier of canonicity uh, and the uh the comics and the on-screen stuff comes first so if uh we we would have to just double check and make sure that like her dad's not a uh, not brought up elsewhere uh, excuse me little little zonked. uh but that's uh that's the end of our second chapter uh next week we're hopping into chapter 21 uh, which looks like we're still in Arkham, which makes sense, given where this chapter left off, how she's just now starting to be, uh, uh, um, listened to by the Joker, and he just professed his love, uh, for her. I'm interested to see if we're going to get the Joker breakout that's mentioned in the, uh, in the comic and episode, right, where it's just like he broke out and was on the lam for like three three weeks or whatever. Um, and she was just so, 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 so uh, worried the whole time until Batman brought him back. Uh, all beat up and broken. I'm trying to flip through and see, uh, but I cannot tell. When do... Oh, we get mention of Amazon and iTunes later on, so you know. That that fits in the 90s setting of Batman the Animated Series. Um, 
but yeah, that's it. Uh, that's it for this week. Um, you know, for the for the book club. Uh, we'll hop back in. Excuse me. Why am I so yawny? Yeah, we'll hop back in, uh, Yanni or Laurel. Uh, we'll hop back in uh, to chapter 21 and 22 uh -huh. next week on Thursday. Um, I hope you all enjoy your Christmases tomorrow, and that uh, that you'll be around on Saturday when we uh, when we have our fun loosey goosey timeliney thing going on, um, and try to try to nail down some more of the uh, of the Batman Beyond. Uh, timeline. Which, speaking of, I know there's only a couple more of you. Uh, I know there's a couple more of you left in here. Uh, and since I'm speaking about uh, Batman Beyond, uh, I want to show y'all really quick a little tease, a little tease of something. Uh, we're trying. We're trying not to not to really. Um, give up the ghost on this until we get our video done just so nobody else poaches the story uh from us uh but our our our, our you know I, I i feel like i can trust the five of you that are here um so while the novel is debatably not canon are we i i read that already i think i thought i saw i thought i saw something else come in but i guess not um but recently where is it where is the pdf open with edge recently i got a i got a, i got another pdf here we were sent this um a a a, a hillary j bader script for a batman beyond comic uh, that was canceled at the last second. Not just the script, but we've got all the art and everything too. Apparently, um, apparently it was like right at uh, uh, the 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 final stages of production. Um, they were about to to go to print. Uh, I, I, they the colors aren't available, uh, but we've got like inks and pencils for it, and. They pulled it last second after having uh, after having advertised it in their solicits and everything uh, because they didn't want to get sued by Marvel for using the terrific trio again because uh, they felt that might that might kind of cross the line. So now we have that, uh, and that's something I'll be you know writing up a video on very soon. I just wanted to mention it since uh, since I was saying you know. Batman Beyond timelining stuff on Saturday. Uh, but yeah. Uh, was that for the tie-in comics at the time? Yes. Yes. And, and uh, you know, if you don't recognize the name of Hillary J. Bader, um, she was a writer on most of the shows. Um, from what I understand, uh, some of her Batman Beyond scripts for the comics were actually like rejected uh, um, rejected episodes that she was just like okay well let me you know just turn them into um, into comic spinoffs uh, but yeah so she wrote Little Piece of Home My Girl Target Action Figures Double Dose Hands of Fate Prototype Heavy Metal Warrior Queen Where There's Smoke Absolute Power In Brightest Day A Fish Story Cold Comfort You Scratch My Back Mean Seasons Ultimate Thrill Animal Act Girls Night Out uh, Golem Meltdown Touch of Curare Hidden Agenda Revenant Final Cut Egg Baby Untouchable Inkling His Maker's Name Next Gen Shadows Taffy Time And Rose Gift On top of just a slew of tie-in comics as well So Hillary knows uh, this world and these characters inside and out and that's i i feel like that's part of like like she passed away yeah okay so she passed away 2002 uh um and wasn't around for justice league and justice league unlimited as a result uh but the majority of uh, of, of the stuff she wrote for tie-in comics still holds up regardless. Like, there's a couple things here and there that, like, Justice League Unlimited 
kind of kind of kicked out of canon, uh, like nanotech being um, what what's it called? Nanotech kind of being uh, um, illegal. Uh, so some of her stories got kicked out by that. But for the most part, she understand she understood like these characters and everything. So her stories are are great uh, for tie-in comics. And I'm very excited that uh, all these years later, we're gonna be the ones who get to uh, get to break that story. Um, but yeah, that all being said, uh, I'll be back on Saturday, uh, 6 p.m. Um, the uh, Pacific time, so five hours from now, whoever's still here, uh, you can, you can kind of check your own time zones. Um, at doing some timeline stuff. Uh, Sunday, we should have a new video. Uh, from what I understand, James is feeling a lot better and has been busy uh, working to edit uh, Ted's Wonder Woman video. Uh, we're talking about doing a Wonder Woman 84 watch-along stream. I don't know for sure um, what the schedule is for that or if we ever like locked down that that was gonna, going to for sure be a thing. Um but hopefully if it is we will be announcing that soon um and you know streams next week are gonna be uh tuesday wednesday thursday at noon pacific time as usual um thank you all for for being here for hanging out uh while we do this uh while we you know take our notes and and, and re read our books and all that kind of fun stuff uh i'm looking forward to uh to coming back and hanging out with you all on saturday uh, you all have a Merry Christmas. Uh, I love y'all. And take care. Happy holidays. <laughs>